Welcome back to Golden Rule Radio, your weekly recap of the precious metals markets. And you know, from time to time, we get some listener or client questions about different facets of the precious metals market that on this particular show focus more on the week to week movements in the metals. We don't really get to talk about uh, more of the specific facets of owning gold. Uh, So we thought this would be a fun week to kind of take some time and just talk about one thing that we get asked about all the time. Where do I keep my gold? Before we get into that question, though, you have to understand that we're recommending on this show physical precious metals, physical, something you can touch, it's real, whether you have it in your hand or you're storing it. We're not talking about buying an exchange traded fund. We're not talking about buying a mining share. We are talking about everyone needs to own something real, something that's been money for longer than anything on the planet, something that's easy to hide, easy to transport, something that you have direct control over. Physical metals don't have a substitute. So when we're talking about this, we're talking about the real thing that you're purchasing. When we buy metals for clients, we're taking that metal out of an inventory of existing metal that is only above ground in the face of the planet, and you allocate that metal specifically to you. So that's what we're talking about, physical metals. So along the lines of buying precious metals, physical metals, then the question becomes, what do I do with it? What do I do with it? Do I store it? Do I take possession of it? Um, What do I do with it when I want to sell it? So we're going to address those questions today, and I think we're going to move right along into the storage option. Yeah, and as we get into this subject, we're going to be moving pretty quickly. We're going to throw a lot of information at you. You do not have to retain it all. We have some information in a special report that we're happy to send you. Just call us at 800-525-9556, or you can email us at info at McIlvaney.com, and we're happy to send you an email with that special report. Just put storage in the subject line, and we'll get it right to you. So guys, let's transition right into the advantages of storage, okay? Assuming somebody's got their physical metals at home, that position's taken care of, what are the times that storage actually provides an advantage over having it in hand? Well, peace of mind, Tori. I mean, having some of your eggs in different baskets is always a good idea. You know, the home runs some insurance risks that we all insure against, theft or fire, things like that, water damage. So having some metals that you have almost immediate access to outside of the home does make sense uh, from an insurance and security standpoint. The storage options we're talking about are not part of the banking system. They are a non-bank depository. So that non-bank depository allows you to buy the physical metal, the coin, the bar, the round, the bag of junk silver, whatever it is, it's physical in nature, and it gets put in a non-bank depository, and they simply just keep it safe. Sure. Well, imagine the irony of taking your money out of the banking system and then placing that metal back in the bank. So, yeah, a yeah. safe deposit box is always an option for people, but that's the risk, right? Sure. And and it's not insured the same way. So these third-party independent storage facilities that we negotiate contracts with are just exactly that. They're independent, and they do have separate insurance riders. And then you also have the protection from not having it being stored at a precious metals brokerage firm like we are. You never want the facility or the entity from which you are acquiring your metals to also be the location where you are storing your metals. Right. That's how Ponzi schemes get formed. So make well, sure it's independent. Well, that should just be good common sense anyway. I mean, never, never let the guy who said he sold you something keep it for you. Yeah, and I think that's very key because when we're buying the metal for the client, we're delivering it to their storage account. We don't then still retain any control of that metal. It gets delivered to their account to do anything with it, to move it, to deliver it, to sell it. They have to sign themselves. We don't have remaining control once we deliver that metal to that account. That's right, but it does play perfectly into a lot of our strategies. So for me, the biggest reason and the, and the greatest motivator for me and my clients with these independent storage accounts is our ratio trading and premium swapping accounts because having metals stored, let's say that we're heavily recommending silver right now and we're acquiring a bunch of 1,000-ounce bars. That's not something you're ever going to want to take delivery of, but it makes an excellent vehicle for swapping into gold later storage accounts save you the cost of the transfer and the shipping back and forth. And there's no cost to do those transactions through the storage facility. So it's a very, very cost-effective way for us to incorporate 
our strategies with ounce accumulation. So with these depositories, there are options that you have where some are good, some are bad. Um, we have been doing this for almost 50 years as a company, and we have moved toward doing things a certain way for various reasons. There are good reasons why we do one thing instead of another. And when you talk about storage, there are all these different aspects to storage, to, to the way you hold metals. There are a lot of different terms that get thrown around and we could address each one line by line. We're going to hit on a few of them and we're going to talk about some of the options that we have. But two of the terms that really get thrown around in the storage space are segregated versus non-segregated. Um, there are some differences with the IRAs and all that. And, you know, if, if you have questions, what I would suggest is just request this storage report that we have. That will provide what you're looking for if you have specific questions. And then just call us and talk to us. But let's jump into segregated versus non-segregated. What, what exactly do those terms mean when we're talking about storage? So in each of these categories, they're both allocated. So everybody needs to understand that it is the tangible metal that you own. There's nobody else that can lay claim to it. But segregated means you get your own section of that vault storage facility. Much like a safe deposit box, if you have a segregated account at an independent vault storage facility, you literally get your own drawer, your own section of the vault, and none of your product is commingled with anybody else's product. Non-segregated, on the other hand, generally comes at a slightly lower price tag uh, because you are looking at your allocated metals, say, sitting on the same shelf as my allocated metals. So it's basically the difference between uh, your stuff separated aside, your gold with your silver, with your platinum all together, like you said, in a safe deposit box, versus a non-segregated account where your gold and my gold are together, your silver and my silver are together, while still allocated to us individually, uh, it just has to do with how specifically those metals are separated from everyone else's. Right, and segregated, you usually, kind of the rule of thumb would be that you usually would only do a segregated storage account if you have rare coins or something that you want that exact product back. But if you have, let's say, Krugerrands or Gold Eagles, when we're buying those Krugerrands and Gold Eagles, we're allocating the money to buying a specific amount of them and therefore you don't really need those segregated. You don't want to pay more to segregate your one Krugerrand from another Krugerrand. They're a uniform product. It's the same thing. So does it matter if you get that Krugerrand back or this one? It really doesn't matter because they're all allocated. So typically segregated would be rare coins. Or somebody that just wants that extra peace of mind. Sure, and you're going to pay for it. Up to three <laughs> times as much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we've talked about the value of having an independent storage facility. We've discussed the different types of storage options depending on the type of product you're looking to have stored. Finally, we got to ask the last question, do we keep it here domestically or do we look abroad? There are a number of facilities both here in the United States, Canada, Europe, uh, even Hong Kong, Singapore, where storage options are available that fit very strict international guidelines. And we should know when we talk about international storage, it's not that we're saying store everything abroad. Take everything that you own in gold and move it abroad. That's not what we're saying. We're saying this is an option for a part, a partial part of your portfolio with metals. So again, going back to the beginning of the show, we're talking about physical metals allocated into a certain metal that one, usually our clients take possession of themselves and they have a certain amount at home. Then they get to a point where they say, I don't want to take possession anymore uh, of any more metals. They've got it kind of maxed out to be able to, to do on their own when in their possession. Then they go to a storage. Maybe they do some domestic storage. The international option is kind of an and both. It's a saying, I have this and that. And it gives you some international diversification, some geographic diversification, so that you have a plan B or a plan C. Not about 100% of what you're owning in the metals should be stored abroad. Now, some people choose to do that. That's their prerogative. But this is an option. You have an option of Switzerland. Switzerland has a long history of protecting private property rights. We work with a facility in Canada uh, where you can store metals, take delivery, 
Robert, and I kind of liked your proximity example here a minute ago. You know, you start thinking locally. What am I keeping at home? You reach a point where maybe you've accumulated enough metal where you want to start looking at branching out for the sake of diversifying your risk, finding some insurance, finding a little bit of convenience if you're looking at pursuing some of our ratio trading strategies. So you diversify into a private independent storage facility in which those metals are allocated in your name. Maybe eventually you reach a point where you start looking at some international options. So there are definitely some great options out there as you're increasing your metals portfolio over time to branch out into some different diversification of safety and diversification of usage for your metals down the road. But what about your cash? Well, how about liquidity? Yeah, cash and liquidity can be somewhat synonymous, but let's talk about liquidity. Uh, we partnered with the Royal Canadian Mint in Ottawa, Canada for a program called Vaulted. You may have heard about it already through a number of our channels, um, but Vaulted is an online platform where you can buy physical gold and it is stored in the Royal Canadian Mint in Ottawa, Canada. That's the same mint where the British sovereigns were made in the early 1900s. Very neat looking facility. I like the look of the castle. And this gives you an option to allocate cash, liquidity, into physical gold and then allows you to sell the physical gold and go right back to cash, connecting your bank to be able to transfer money uh, in and out of the gold market. Um, I look at it as a personal savings account where you can allocate into gold and hold it. And if you need money quickly, you can sell and move it right back into your bank account. So I like that program. And we'll leave a link in the description below if you want to find out more about Vaulted. So that will do it this week for Golden Rule Radio. We encourage you to visit our website at mackelvaney.com. Click the subscribe button, ring the bell, stop by Facebook, McIlvaney Financial, or Twitter at ICA Gold. And if you have more questions about some of your storage options, uh, would like to see our special report on how precious metal storage works, or speak with one of us directly, feel free to give us a call anytime at 1-800-525-9556. Thanks for listening. Have a great week.